Right folks, very good morning. Now I've come to this new sort of petrol station area they've got down here, Camp Hill. It's called the po Pogo Charge, I charging uh, for your petrol. Uh, so how does this work now? So, charge, probably not standard. I've still got a wrap thing on it. I don't understand, I've still got a wrap thing on it. So where's the nozzle? Can't find the petrol nozzle anywhere. Um, that's weird. That's a scan thing. Can maybe use that. Let's go. So we can, so we can charge him. What's all that about? That's, oh, that's, that's, oh, this must be the, the petrol nozzle here. This is the petrol nozzle here. So that goes in the car. Right. I'll. Uh, there's no display on it. Nothing to show you how to do it. So let me come back later on and see how I can get on with it. it doesn't actually say how much it is a, a gallon either. Um, your very futuristic petrol station. If I have to go, you better buy the day. Not gonna pay. The life is like a round the bike, you're just spinning away. Take me up, take me down, take me anywhere. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, give me all the money I need. So why? 
can be free, I can be free, oh, I can be free. Oh, so give me all the money I need, so I can be free. <laughs> There's Captain Morgan walking the plank. Oh no! Oh, army hearties, oh, army hearties. Off the plank you go. Oh no! Uh, oh. Spot Rosie, spot Rosie. Now then, Rosie's about to go and put a parcel back. She bought something she didn't like. Surprise, surprise. Now, Grotty Fairy Library here. Scene of my, uh, my many uh, are coming here when I was younger. I used to love getting books and just, you know, anything about the Romans, about uh, oh, just anything, man, anything. Anyway, because I was quite an eclectic little youngster, little reader. Anyway, this library holds a, a statue secret, a secret statue done by the same guy that did the statue of the bear that's uh, up in the Reform Street. Yeah, and I can't remember his name, but anyway, this is a statue. It's, right, it's hidden, hidden right in the back here. Nobody knows it's here. Oh no, there's somebody at it. Oh no, it's not. It's the statue of the man himself. <laughs> here it is, folks. So we're going past the, uh, the reed bed here. Go. And here it is, look. There he is. Let's see what he's up to. Oh, it is nice. What's he reading? What's he reading? Right, the poem he's reading here is called The Cat and the Moon by William Batter, as in fish and batter, I suppose. Hey, mate. All right. Gosh, when you look at him, he's looking right into your eyes, man, right into the depths of your soul. Look at him. All right, mate. He looks a bit like Lenin from the side, doesn't he? A Lenin head. All right, mate. Cat and the Moon, eh? You're looking straight at the cat, aren't you? And the cat's looking straight back at you. Yep. They're having a stare at competition. Anyway, so there you go, secret statue, right here. We shall walk along and find out then. Right, folks, very good afternoon. We're out on a stroll here today. Now, Rosie's not wanted to go on the beach because she's got a new trainers on, so we have to walk on the uh, on the pavement. So it's a really nice afternoon, man. Where's the where's this sun come from? Brilliant. There's a park of walking today, folks. It's a football park. It's a Monty Peace Athletic Football Park or something. Yeah, this is kind of new, isn't it? Money Fees Athletic Football Club, yeah, there you go, look. Boom. Nice formation these birds have got here. Now the red flag's flying, folks, so fortunately we can't go any further. Look at this, folks, it takes me back to my goalkeeping days when I was a goalkeeper. Remember I saved the penalty, great dive, took it over the bar, yes. Oh, I used to love playing football, man. Ah, last time I played football, Rosie went, you're not allowed to go and play football because you'll do an injury. I said, no, I'll be fine. And what happened? I went and broke my collarbone. <laughs> anyway, let's see what's going on here. Right, there's a red flag flying, so, and there's a dude in the box, so we'll not get any further. Let's see what's going on. Hang on. Signs say something like danger. These dunes are being undermined by coastal erosion. Red flag, folks. Not any further. It's unfortunate. I don't have to examine this new building that's just appeared. I don't know what it is. I'll take it with some sort of sports centre thing. Right, folks, come to explore this. Uh, see what this is going to be here. Some sort of dining area. Space! Now there's uh, heroes and an Arctic roll. I'm not actually sure what this is going to be, folks, but oh, here we are hiring cook with supervisory experience. 
to work in the Mac, our brand new community building uh, at Riverside, 20,000 a month, uh, <laughs> a month per annum. Are you a hardworking individual with a cheerful, positive personality and exemplary customer service standards? That's me. Passionate about preparing and producing creative quality food? Yeah, that's me. Providing fantastic customer service? Yeah, that's me. And have great organisation on budgeting skills? Hmm. If this sounds like you and you'd love to work and be part of a great team in a stunning location, I didn't need a stunning location, then look at Indeed and Good Moves for our job description. Right, okay, so it's got to be some sort of community sort of food thing, yeah. Wow, excellent. See, I could do that, but I'm not, I don't have any qualifications for being a, a chef or a cook or anything. I can make them pasta sauce, a nice red pasta sauce, and I can make them chicken fricassee. I think I make a mean sausage roll as well when I need to. Yeah, I look at all time. Hello. Right, an excellent wee. Oh, there's another bit here, look. Very modern and clean looking, I must say. Right. It's called the Mac building anyway, so there we go. Okay, spot Rosie. Spot Rosie. Right, folks, we have changed location. We have come to our broth. Yes. Our broth. Well, because bro lives in our broth. Bro, our broth, yeah. Uh, right. Um, so, what the plan was, we we're going to use, but I've got this card thing. It's got 60 quid in it to one of these big weather spoony sort of places up in Kingsway. So, I thought we'll go for tea up there. May as well use it because it's got to be used by so and so. So, we're in the car and I suddenly thought, our broth, fish and chips. Fancy that. So, this is where we are. Excellent. It's a disaster, folks. The Oh, for heaven's sake. Oh, for fish sake, man, it's sharp. It used to be a pepper, it used to be a really good fish. It still is a good chippy. So, right, the plan has already changed again, deviated. We need to go to the shops now and get some tomato sauce and some napkins, I think. Yeah. Good. <laughs> right, folks, the plan has just changed again. Yeah, we'll go there, man. So, uh, yeah, so we're going to go get fish and chips, but just before that, she fancied a half a pint. Yes, it turns into the sunshine. Is that a knot or not? I don't know, is it not? Who knows? Cool. Guess what this is, folks? Oh, yes, you guessed it. it's a pint. It is a pint. Oh, look at that pint in the sunset. Excellent. Woo! Well, this seems to be the place for the uh, the waves to be cracking open here, as like usual. Right, this is the best bit. There, yeah, right there, this is the best bit. Yeah. Fish supper. There it is. Look at that, man. Oh, look at that. Yeah, get it. Right, folks. So there we are. Chips, fish and chips, and Marcos at the harbour. <coughs> Very nice indeed. Very affordable. Got a fish supper and a single fish, only fourteen pounds. So very good indeed. And the ambience, of course, the ambience has got a lot to do with it. I mean, if we've been sitting in the middle of a motor eating that, wouldn't it be the same, would it? Oh, this is glass. Hang on. Um, yeah. So very nice indeed. Very crispy chips. Very like small roast potatoes. And the the fish was lovely and chunky, man. It was brilliant. 
So very enjoyable. I had, I had a fish and a half and loads of chips. So yeah, really good value for money. So on the uh, your ometer, folks, <coughs> this is going to get a good solid eight and a half. Thank you very much. That, yeah. Right, folks, well, to finish off the uh, late afternoon here, we have a McFlurry. Uh, <laughs> we asked the guy, what McFlurries do you got? We have Smarties, Twix, Maltesers, or Galaxy Chocolate. Two Galaxy Chocolates, please. Straight in a bit. So that's our <coughs> late afternoon over. So thank you very much for watching, folks. Subscribe, like, comment, whatever you want to do. Do it, please. Thank you very much. And thank you for all the comments and uh, for looking after me. You know, fantastic. Really appreciate all you wonderful subscribers. So, thank you. A bit of a nice sort of... It doesn't really pick it up on camera, but a bit of a nice guy. Stormy, strange guy. Okay, catch you there, folks. See you soon. Bye. Very good morning, Tuesday morning. Now, disaster after disaster after disaster keeps happening after the McCars MOT fiasco. Well, now, the shower fiasco. The shower was leaking uh, last night, come in and uh, did, did, did. so, yeah, panic. But thank the Lord for my mates, thank the Lord for my mates, and especially this time. George saved me last time, this time, Scott. Scott saved me this time, phoned him up. It was over within 20 minutes. I mean, that guy, godsend. My mates are godsends. I love my mates. And I like to think they love me too. But I hadn't seen Scott for a little while, so yeah, I felt bad finding him up. But he came across and he sorted out and it was over this morning at uh, eight o'clock. I know I still got my nap up late, so I'm just off to work now, but he's sealed the shower up and uh, hopefully that'll be it, it done. But honestly, man, it's, it's so kind of my friends and my mates and just, jumping around and sorting things out for me straight away. Um, yeah, it's brilliant, absolutely brilliant. So I'm a bit tired, am I, am I grumpy? I don't know if I'm grumpy, I'm just tired. And it's Tuesday today, it's a long, long day. Tuesday, 10 o'clock. <laughs> oh Lord. It's funny how things, you know, when they start going wrong, they start going wrong, don't they? And, and I wonder if I first said, oh, it comes in threes, comes in threes. I don't know, man, it's just a strange, one of these strange little English folklore saying sort of things, isn't it? Anyway, right, everything's done and we've got to go to work and just get on with it. Good evening, guys. Here I am, all branded up. I know, I hate that. I hate it. We're not supposed to be doing videos with Mecca showing, so it's tough. What can I do? Anyway, uh, I've got this chocolate bar. Mr. Beast Festival. Mr. Beast Festival. I saw it in this bar. Two pounds for that. But... I think if you scan the code or something, you, you can win. There's things to win, so that's my code there. So I'm going to scan it um, and see what happens. Yeah, so Mr. Beast is a mega YouTuber, as I'm sure you all know. Um, he's got a few more subscribers than myself. He's got about 50 billion or something, doesn't he, Mr. Thingy? Right, so we're just going to try his chocolate anyway, see what it's all about. It's a bit like that uh, when Prime, the Prime chocolate, the Prime bars came out, remember? They all came out and uh, I saw a funny shape. Thank you. Right, it's all in strange. Trying to be a little bit different. Um, which I like, you know, it's, it's good. Remember the Prime bottles came out and it was all done by KJI or whatever his name was, another chap. Anyway, oh, it's a nice snap to that, isn't that? Oh, it's brilliant. I like a good snap. No, it's Mr. Beast, not American. I think so. This could be American chocolate, which is normally rubbish, isn't it? Mmm. Good snappability, I like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's quite chunky, if you know what I mean. Mmm. Good to chew on. I like the shape of it because it's got ridges. I mean, you can buy anything or. Mmm. I forgot. I've got a coffee as well to wash it down. Even though it's quite good chocolate. Well, I can't see anyone here about being American or anyway. So I'm going to scan the code, folks. I need my phone for that. So 
assume who I borrow you and scan to a point. Right, there we go. So, Mr. My hair's all over. Mr. Beast and his chocolate it was all right, but <clears throat> went to a scanned thing about it. Just took me to his website, it's a very cartoony website. I joined the crew and obviously aimed at younger, sort of YouTube people. YouTube people? Anyway, what am I then? I'm a mature YouTuber. Is that what I'd say? Yeah. My audience is like that too. I think my audience is between 45 and 65. Same sort of demographic as myself, you know? I went looking on the, um, the statistic things that said, here's my average, my average uh, viewer is uh, between 45 and 65, male, white, um, and is British. I thought, that's, that's me. <laughs> it's just taking my profile and said, there you go, that's, that's your average viewer. But uh, mm, I know who my viewers are. I know who you are, like, guys. Thank you very much for all your comments and all your, your, your funny things you send me. It's just brilliant, man. I love it. And when I bump into people, they go, oh, Jack. And here's a story. Uh, a girl at work, Leslie, she's going out with this uh, bloke on a date. First date she's had for ages. Um, so uh, <laughs> she was uh, telling him that she worked at Mecca. And he went, oh, hang on. You work at Mecca? Oh, you'll know Jack then. Jack, he's, he's a YouTuber. I follow him. And Leslie's like, oh, God. So Leslie's new date. It's going to be as a, 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 a viewer. Is a, is a, a viewer? What, what can I call you guys? Jag Liv, Jag Livites or something, you know? Anyway, just uh, just let you know that's Leslie's going on a date with. Uh, uh, something like they'll just end up talking about me all night. <laughs> oh, I just want really cool, yes. Just in the yes, there it is. Look, this is tea time. Do do la di Heaven's sake, start again, man. It's awful.